Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another video, another podcast with a great guest, a returning guest to the channel. The last time I spoke to this guest was back in June, just before Project Restart. So a lot has happened in a Chelsea perspective uh, since then. So interesting to talk today uh, following the Ren win. So a good time to be speaking about Chelsea with this guest. He is the owner of the Imperial Wolf and the Chelsea Echo and formerly of 100% Chelsea. Great to speak to you, Louis. Once again, welcome back to the channel. Hello, mate. How are you? Thank you for having me. No worries, man. Um, it's been an interesting time, an interesting year for all of us. Um, mm. As as you are wearing the tracksuit right now, I want to speak to you firstly about Imperial Wolf because that's been a big project of yours that you've been working hard on for a couple of years now. Because I, I, you know, I was briefly a part of it in sort of summer 2019. So a lot has happened. Uh, what's been the journey of Imperial Wolf? Because it seems to be rolling now, and you seem to be getting games on again. You've got the YouTube channel again. Uh, what's it been like? Yeah, it's been great. First of all, I would like to say this isn't product placement. This is just the comfiest tracksuit that I own. So I'm like wearing it as much as possible. It's just been through the wash. I wanted to get it back on. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been it's been good. Obviously, you know, um, I actually was looking at it back in summer 2018 was when we first started at looking doing it. A uh, few Chelsea content creators didn't materialize. Um, obviously, wanted a game against AFTV. They wanted us to play them. And then you know nothing, nothing came of it, really. Uh, and then... I just uni finished and I went, how do you know what? Let's go for it. Let's have less. Let's true. Let's do something new because I felt that I'd, I'd hit my ceiling with a hundred percent Chelsea. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't feeling it as much. Um, and there was just lots of stuff going on, which I just wasn't happy with. Um, so I thought, you know what? Let's try something new. Let's go for a new project. Um, and yeah, I started with George Keely. I started with a, a friend of mine from uni called Matty. Um, they've both gone on to do fantastic other things as well. Um, and yeah, we just sort of, we just got it rolling. Last year was very difficult. I think, you know, <laughs> what I didn't kind of consider was, I mean, you, you look at behind the scenes of a, a lot of, you know, YouTube football clubs. It's, it's a lot of people that have known each other for a very long time. who just gone, let's want to play football and they'll put it on the internet. For me, it was a case of I've got uh, some content creators. We've got some players through kind of a few people I've been speaking to since the summer of 2018. So I go, right, this is what I want to do next year. Are you in? Um, and we, we kind of built it and then it just slowed down because of lack of games, lack of organization from the league we were in. So I, uh, so yeah, we kind of COVID hit, obviously, oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> no, let's not call it that. Yeah. Colin hit, uh, and, uh, cause monetization, all that. Um, and it kind of gave us an opportunity to rethink, um, and get different people in, work on different stuff. And then this year, you know, we, we had some problems with the, the league we were in. Um, the game previously last year against opposition, opposition threatened to, to stab some of my players, uh, threatened to beat up my camerawoman. Uh, league said they'd take action, failed to do so. So we, and then they track back saying they want evidence, they want this, they want that. Uh, after saying they sort it out, didn't do it. Uh, and... Um, we just thought, well, you know what, it's a year early, but we're going to try out the non-league pyramid. Um, so we, you know, felt our way in, found a league that was willing to take us on. They're like a, a sidestep from the pyramid. So as a standalone division, it is still considered non-league football. But from this, it's kind of, you've got, you've got your 12 teams, you've got your cup competition, and that's it. Uh, there's no relegation, there's no promotion. So we kind of using this year as a, as a feeler almost to sort of establish ourselves and understand where to go within the pyramid. Because, you know, playing... YouTube football's great. I think it's fantastic playing other YouTube opposition. I think it's great for the for the industry that's, you know, it is ever growing. There are a lot of teams. It is on the up. And, um, but it, it was all, it, it wasn't very real. It, it, it didn't feel, feel the same. Whereas now when we're, you know, we're turning up at two o'clock in the afternoon, we're playing on Hackney Marshes, you know, the, the battleground for, for, for non-league football since in the UK, since the beginning, that's, that was where it started. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're going and meeting re like people off the street who, you know, who, who just want to play football with their mates and getting a real feel for, for the atmosphere that non-league generates. And I, and I absolutely love it. And this year it's been fantastic. Undefeated in the league. Um, we're going into our, our next game on the 5th of 5th of December um, against a team called Victoria Park. And um, yeah, we're just looking to, to continue that run. Brought in some fantastic players as well. Um, people have come back as well. So we've had uh, Reese Guy, who was in the 4-4 with DT. He, he, he kind of kicked it all off. Um, he's come back to play for us. 
the Wimbledon shabby, uh, Harry Wickens. He's come back to play for us. Obviously, you know both of them quite well, Dan. So, you know, we've we've got some great f- familiar faces and people watching Pirouette for a long time with now consistent content. And we're, I'm enjoying it. I think it's the it was something different. I needed a change up. Um, and and it's definitely something I, I really, really enjoy. Uh, and it's been fantastic support obviously, from everyone within the Chelsea community as well, which I'm really grateful for. So, you know, like you, Eunice, uh, Yannick, obviously the London's Blue podcast sponsors our shirts. So it's um, it's fantastic to almost really get uh, have the community embracing us. Um, and for me, it's, it's, it's like we've also had people coming to watch as well from, you know, Chelsea Twitter and stuff. And it's and it's, that's another thing which I'm really grateful for, because obviously for fans, who you, you can't go and watch football live anymore and even though they're saying obviously with everything that's happening obviously <laughs> well previously when we we're speaking about project restart now they're looking at someone else you're saying four thousand fans of stadiums can't sing can't do this can't do that i i think that there's a well i've certainly felt it over the past few months there's it's football's starting to change and obviously it would with everything that's happening. And I, I don't feel that there's the connection between top level clubs and fans that there used to be. Um, I still love Chelsea. I'm not sitting there saying, you know, I wouldn't go watch Chelsea ever again. Obviously, I, you know, I've got a season ticket. I'm going to go. Um, and, you know, I, I love meeting people. I love the social aspect of football. But obviously with 4,000 people in stadiums, you're not going to get that anymore. And what I found really cool is we've had people come in to watch us who have then embraced that social aspect. So six of them would come down, you know, they come watch the football, they then they go to the pub, they do what they need to do, everything they would do on a Chelsea match day, but they would come and watch us instead. And I'm not sitting here saying, you know, I want people to, you know, support us instead and all that sort of stuff. But it's nice to be able to feel that with fo- football, the big thing for, for me at Wharf was I wanted to respect previous football culture and I wanted to embrace it. So I'm talking, you know, everything down to the clothes, the music, you know, how people conduct themselves on a match day, everything about it. I wanted to, to do and have people be able to feel they could do that with us with our own little twist and I'll build our own community, build our own culture. Um, and that's the beauty of it at the minute. You know, it's, it's, I'm finding it fantastic and I'm, I'm enjoying you know, turning up to training every Thursday, turning up to games every Saturday and have players and people there that understand that what they're doing is they're not only, you know, building a football club, but they're, they're building their own culture. They're writing their own stories within it. Um, and they they know what they're doing is, it's, 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 it's just, they, well, for, for them, it feels rewarding, which is the most important thing for me. And they also, I've had a few people, you know, players that have been turned away from academies or have been released from academies that have come to play with us very much like rising ball is one of our our aims is to is to get them back into football just help them fall in love with it again and i'm having people come in and and feel like they can just love the game again and because there, there was a lot of disillusionment and obviously there was the young lad who felt that he had to had to kill himself um and then it's, it's sad when people feel that's the only way out um because of academies treating kids like numbers and you know we've had guys come play for us who they want to get back to professional football they want to play regularly they want to get paid to do it but they just don't have the same love for it and it's, you know i i can appreciate where they're coming from because that's kind of how i felt about about youtube about a year 18 months ago um and it's nice to be able to see them falling in love with football again and and getting ready to go on and take that next step again. And it's the same with our creative people as well. You know, we've had um, Joe Lee was one of our, our young creators. I picked him up from when I was at uni. Um, so he's 19 now and he's, you know, presenting shows for the, the largest grand boxing channel in, in the world on YouTube and, you know, interviewing Frank, Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, you know, getting ahead of those big fights. Um, Jody, obviously, who you know, she's now, you know, running her own production company, working with, you know, the BBC, working with Odeon, you know, she's gone on to do amazing things as well. And it's, it's nice to be able to build our community and see people go off and do their own things as well, which is a big thing for me. So we're respecting culture, we're building culture. And I, I like, the idea of nurturing talent and helping them just take those steps 
um, which I never got to take. But, you know, so, yeah, who knows? I, I think I think that's a great thing. I think, you know, in terms of personal connection, this year has been a, something that's distant for a lot of us, you know, in terms of other than being in our small isolated bubbles this year because of uh, the situation of this year, unfortunately. And and I think the fact that you said, especially football, there's, there's so much more to supporting a football club than just what happens on the pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason people support football clubs for life is not necessarily, I mean, it, it can't just be about what happens on the pitch on a Saturday because I think it'd be quite sort of uh, uh, shallow in terms of your your love for a club because if all that mattered was whether your team won or lost, I mean, it's very lucky being a Chelsea fan to see the success, but there's so much more to it. You know, it's family, it's friends, it's, you know, the walk to the ground, it's the social aspect of it, mm. it's your traditions around supporting that club. And, and I love the fact that you've sort of, in a very difficult time and for everyone I think you know having that sort of community spirit in some way in many aspects that you've just detailed I think I think is really important in terms of being uh the coach or being the manager of the team and and I saw the videos and saw your recent matches you know in terms of tactics in terms of preparation um being a football fan and having opinions about that with you know 100% Chelsea and and giving your opinions has there been anything coaching players and talking to players and trying to get your message out there that's sort of been revealing to you from a fan's perspective into a manager's perspective is something that has sort of revealed itself that you're like oh I was surprised about that element of the game that I didn't expect (laughs) yeah (laughs) a lot it was the very first one where I was stood there it was our first so we we played we played United Stand first we played AFTV you know the pre-season friendly were kind of just feelers and having the fun with it and then it came to our very first league game we played Madness in the Replay Me League last year. And I was sat there, I was st- st- stood on the pitch on my own when everyone else is in the changing room and you just, it's kind of taking everything in. And then, I mean, look, I, I, I can't sit here and say, oh, I know exactly what Frank Lampard goes through every single game because I'm doing it with a bunch of lads who turn up on, who t- at that point were turning up on a Sunday, training on a Friday and just having a kick about really, you know, under media scrutiny and everything else. I, I, I don't think you can imagine what you go through, but my God, sort of, you know, being able to man manage 30 plus people um, and, you know, tactically go through games and all that sort of stuff as well was in- re- incredibly difficult, um, which is why I kind of I brought in um, Steve, who's come in and worked wonders with the lads. He's built a really good reputation with everyone and everyone loves him really. And he's a fan. He's got, got a fantastic football in mind um, and being able to kind of have him and also have Nico as well, who who really hypes the lads up and is great for fitness. And obviously, you know, former Muay Thai champion. I think he was the first white guy to actually win in Thailand. Um, you know, he uh, it's, it's fantastic to have those sort of people around. Um, and you just running a club itself, sort of you appreciate, you appreciate football a little bit more, I feel. So sort of, I mean, I think it's also because as, as I've got older, I can't make it, it makes me sound ancient. I mean, I've I've been doing YouTube since I was 17. 17. Um, famous Southampton video, I was 17. And I think it's safe to say I was, uh, and still can be, but I think I've measured, I'm a little bit me- more measured now. I still get quite angry. <laughs> um, whereas now, what sort of, I think with, with Chelsea over the past couple of years, when I go on Twitter and you just see, I think there's an element of toxicity from from doing other stuff as well. And you just see uh, people just saying, oh, this person's shit, get rid of them. This person's crap, get rid of them. Oh, this is awful. Oh, this out, this out, that out. You're like, you, you need to understand the ins and outs a little bit more. And I mean, running a club, again, not Premier League, but still running a club, you kind of see all the little cogs that need to be working together to make sure that something doesn't work. I mean, I take, I take. Let's if we, if you take two examples, you got, you got Sari, you got Lampard. Um, you could see, for example, that within what's you, I like as much as for me personally, I understood what he was trying to do. Sari, I understood what he was doing and how he was trying to develop it. There was no way it was going to work, as proven at Juventus, because there wasn't the the right nothing. There wasn't the right machine in place. Everything was a little bit disjointed and obviously when they were told you've got to transfer ban, you've got to use youth players and he didn't want to use anyone else other than players he knows then that was where you know it fell apart then you kind of look at what Lampard's doing at Chelsea there is a clear methodology behind everything there was a methodology behind what Sarah was trying to do and you saw the fruits of his labours from a footballing perspective 
um, in Baku. You know, that the football we were playing was superb. But the problem was everything else. Whereas with Lampard, as much as, look, he's he's not been in football for 20, 30 years. He, well, from a, from a managerial perspective, you can see the, I, I personally feel, and obviously, you know, football subjective, you can see that there's a, a clear plan in place with everything. And I'm not talking just footballing. I'm not talking just transfers. I'm not talking just coaching. I'm talking from a business side. I'm talking from a managerial perspective, from Roman all the way down. I'm talking, um, you know, the, the, there's almost like a, a philosophy he's trying to develop as well, I feel personally. And I know people will disagree. You know, that's what Twitter's very good at doing that. Uh, but, you know, I think that, you know, running a football club from my perspective, I kind of have been able to appreciate all those those little cogs a little bit more. Um, and I'm not as, I'm still, well, I'm still very opinionated, but I'm, I kind of try to piece it all together first. And it's, whereas previously, I think, let's just take that Southampton game, for example. I think everyone was frustrated. But I, 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 you know, for me, I the problem I had then was I was from a personal perspective, and you, you know, because you know we were speaking every day at that point, you know, and we were hanging out a lot. You know that mentally I was struggling with everything, you know, in life as well, and it was like just snap second, just went. Um, and I still, I still, I, I don't, I don't, I think regret's the wrong word. I think it's important to understand where you came from and i would never slag off fan channels because i wouldn't be sat here without them um but i think it's important to evolve and i think it's important to look back and how how i conducted myself how everything was moving in different ways i mean one thing i said um when i was talking about people leaving the 75th minute i still stand by that for example i think if you're going to do that i mean it's uh I, it, I think it's pointless. I think it's, it's just marching with your feet just doesn't help. But on the other hand, it is your money. You do what you want. Do you know what I mean? Whereas previously, it was just like, nope, this is it. This is the line. And I was very sort of straight down the middle. And I think, especially over the last 18 months, being able to just sort of, because I was so involved, being able to take a step back and sort of analyse everything purely from, obviously, I know that's off on the tangent a little bit, but, you know, from a footballing perspective and being able to respect it a bit more and actually from a, personal and life experience perspective it it's been really refreshing um and you know i'm really happy with frank lampard <laughs> it's the bottom line just to bring it all the way back i think you know it, it, it's all he, everything that he's doing at chelsea at the minute is is superb um and you know as what he said last night about mason mount and uh <laughs> and uh proper chelsea fans appreciating him i think you know i think i can stand by that as well i think you know, there's the Again, from just from footballing perspective and, and watching football and coaching football grassroots a bit more frequently than I was previously, um, you know you can uh, you can appreciate a good player who might not do all the obvious things which you know FIFA career mode players love, but you know everyone seems to be a, a a footballing genius nowadays. You know everyone's talking about half spaces and you know playing into certain positions and the XG and all this sort of stuff. At the end of the day, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. We don't know how everything's operating. But I think if you just take at base value what we've got, it's it's superb. You know, we 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 overachieved massively last year. Frank Lampard's then obviously had the pressure this year of you know bringing in a lot of players, being able to manage them, and could do it well. So far, I'm you know that's a little worry for me. I think you know from a personnel perspective, we might be struggling because. We've got such an overload in key positions of of world class players, players that we've paid for, players that have come through the academy. Finding that balance is going to be difficult. Um, but you know, I think that you know what what we've got and what we're doing and moving forward. As long as there's a year on year improvement to eventually, hopefully, Frank Lampard winning a Premier League title with Chelsea, which I can see happening in the next two three years, not this year, but maybe the next two three years. I think that it just goes to prove that, you know, longevity and working hard on a project, you know, under a manager who might not be, you know, the one of the the, the hipster managers in, in, a, in a Tuchel or a, or a Nagelsmann, which everyone was banging on about, you know, but a man which has brought together, again, comparison, sorry, Lampard. Lampard has brought together everybody. He's been He's been the glue that binds everything together from Marina and Roman all the way down to us. 
you know sorry you didn't have that you had clear animosity between different individuals in different places but you know you can appreciate what he did for the club um but yeah being able to run a club and sort of again bringing it back uh being able to run a club and sort of try my best to understand it without being in the room i've been able to appreciate it a lot more 